Hi, my name is Rod Cleef, and I'm the host of the Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing Podcast. And every week I interview multifamily rock stars, and we talk about how they've built incredible wealth for themselves and their families through multifamily properties. So hit the like and subscribe buttons to get notified every Monday when a new episode comes out. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Multifamily Rockstars. So as you guys know, this is where we interview people that are crushing it in this business and we show you really how it's done on the inside with multifamily investors that are just incredibly successful. They're creating that success, not just in their businesses, but in their lives. And as always, I've got my co-host, who's the director of our Massive Action Team for the Warrior, you know, for our Warrior Mentorship Program, Mark Nagy on the call. Mark, what's up, bro? Doing really well, man. Just uh we got uh, a guy's familiar face from the Orlando boot camp uh, up on stage for those who didn't make it. And so uh, if you didn't make it, good to hear from him today on the podcast and listen. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got Sam Froer on the podcast today and he's the managing partner of MGW Ventures. And uh, he's got some commercial real estate background. He worked for a REIT as an intern way back when, but you know what? I'm stealing his thunder. Uh, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you, Rod. Uh, Mark, great to be with you both today. Yeah, you bet. So, you know, I know you've got it. You, you closed on a nice deal in Nashville, a market. I'm, I'm jealous of that one, actually. That's an incredible market. Um, you've got, I think it's 124 doors there. But uh, talk a little bit about your progression into this business. You know, give us a little background because um, I, uh, yeah, because yeah. I didn't dig into it. Yeah. Absolutely. Happy to share. Um, and and I have to say, I, my, my background is a little different than most in that I really tried to take your advice running, uh, listening to your podcast for a few years and over and over, I heard go big. And so that first deal, that 124 unit we did in Nashville, we can talk a little bit more about it, but, uh, appreciate the advice that you gave to, to help me do that, but to take a step back and how, how we got to that point, uh, as you mentioned, I, I worked at a, at a REIT, a real estate investment trust out in Utah when I was in college. Um, but really had no idea what it was that I'd stumbled into. I was underwriting and, and looking at deals and uh, for apartment buildings for this company. Uh, but I would plug in the numbers and see, oh, it's a 30% IRR and have no idea what that meant and just send it up the ladder. Um, and what I kind of heard was the cool and sexy place to be was, was tech. And so I took a step away from real estate. I joined uh, in Utah where I'm, where I'm from. I joined a startup tech company that uh, was a great experience. We went from a couple hundred employees to a couple thousand employees over about four years and, and sold for a large amount of money to another company. Um, I did have some equity in the company. Again, I just came in as a low-level employee, so not a life-changing amount, but it was definitely the biggest check I'd ever seen in my life. And as, as that happened, as that event happened, I was like, wow, I, I just worked so hard for the past four years do I have to do this again do, for another event for large inflow of cash? Like there has to be a better way for me to have my money work for me. And that's when I started to look back into real, uh, real estate, the paradigm shifting reading of rich dad, poor dad, and, and starting to learn just everything I could about the space. And so fast forward a few years later, as I continued to, I moved to California and I got my real estate license out here, didn't do much with it, started to do meetups. Uh, and then started listening actually to your podcast, Rod, and recognized, wow, multifamily, there's, there's really a real estate is a great place to be in, but specifically multifamily for a lot of reasons is a fantastic place to be in. And everyone that you interviewed said, I wish I'd gone big sooner. And so I said, okay, maybe I can go bigger sooner. So I remember attending uh, just last year, it's been now a year in, in March, attending your virtual boot camp. And recognizing this is something that could be really valuable, signing up for the mentorship program. And uh, six months later, not without a lot of uh, hard work and teamwork put into it, but finding and closing our, our first deal in, in Nashville. Fantastic. And you did that with uh, other warrior, uh, with Lauren as well, one of the other warriors, correct? Yep, that's correct. I've got my main core partner, um, but as well, we brought in uh, Lauren and actually one other uh, warrior group as well for, for this. Fantastic. One. Fantastic. So, let me ask you this, just to get a little uh, background, because uh, I don't, I just don't remember. Forgive me, I've got too many students. What, yeah. what uh, in the tech business? What sort of a background did you have? What were you doing? I mean, I'm, I'm looking. What I'm looking for is the skill sets that you brought to multifamily. Yeah, great question. And and to uh, to be upfront too, I still have that tech job. It's oh, yeah, you do. I, okay. Yep, I do. And and my goal is to continue to run that. It's funny. There may be one day where they just say. Where, where are you going all these hours working on real estate? But as of now, I, I direct a team 
uh, focused on uh, renewing and retaining our, our top customers at a software company. And it's all the company is all based on well-being. Um, and so kind of two things that I've been able to bring from from that background, driving well-being for the companies that are using our software, but also just focusing on that retaining uh uh, our customers is being able to now write on the property management side. There's so much that I've learned. And on the investor relations side, there's so much I've learned of how is it that I treat people? How is it, do I understand what their needs are and how I can benefit them in order for us to have really a, a win-win scenario. And so I've been very grateful for that experience. It continues to help me as I am in this space. Sure. So there you go, guys. I mean, there's, there's, there's something actually that has not come up before. It's really <clears throat> almost a, almost a, well, it's a, it's a, it's a relationship based background that you bring to this and communication and, 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 and influence. Um, I'm not going to say sales, even though I suppose it could be called sales as well. But so, you know, as, as we do these interviews, we always talk about the different hats that people can wear to come into this business and it is a, a team sport. And so, you know, very valuable, um, uh, skill set that you that you bring to the table um, with what you just described and, I, and yeah oh no I was gonna say I appreciate it and I really do think that it, it is a huge piece right as we look at what your biggest expense is in in a business in real estate it it's turnover mm -hmm. and so if you're both with your employees and your investors and so if you think hey if and I your tenants and, and your tenants, tenants. Yes, that's what I meant yeah. to say yes my, my mm -hmm. tenants that if I can give them a great experience so they're they're not leaving and then I'm retaining them year over year it is so much easier for me to continue to make uh, you know great money for my investors, but a good experience for them as I'm taking care of them year over year and they stay. And same with the investors, right? If you're able to continue, the goal is to be in this for the long haul as you're able to take your investors from one deal to the next because of how you treated <clears throat> them and how the returns that you gave them, like that's going to be so much easier for you and beneficial for them in the long run. Yep. Yep. So Sam, I, obviously you, you said you went big right out of the gate, which is awesome. Where do you think you would have started if you didn't have a team and didn't have help getting started in this? I think I would have started really the the typical route, right? Of just like, okay, what's the the Burr uh, strategy as they call it, or the single family, maybe the duplex or quadplex of house hacking. Um, and even when I first started the program, I, I remember thinking, oh, maybe I could do 10 or 20 units. And it it really wasn't until I, I got inundated by, you know, just all the amazing people in this group to recognize, wow, like, there's so, so much to be said of, of going for those, those larger doors that the deal itself, the work itself doesn't change. In some ways, it actually gets easier as you're able to bring in full-time property management um, and just the nature of, of scale. Uh, but recognizing, wow, this, this feels a little uncomfortable, actually feels very uncomfortable, but I'm going to trust that this is what everyone's saying to do. So I'm going to get out of my comfort zone and go do it. <laughs> That's it was actually where I was going to go with the next question was around fear, around uh, discomfort. Um, you know, what did you do about the self-talk as it related to that dynamic? Yeah, uh, you know, it, it's funny as, as part of attending uh, your boot camp, Rod, you do this, this affirmation statement. And mm -hmm. I've literally got it still on my wall from from a year ago that I look at every single day of I am Sam, Sam Froer, I am happy, I am grateful, I'm emotionally intelligent, I'm a loving husband, a caring and responsive father, I'm a commercial real estate legend, I bless others and change lives, and I crush it in real estate investing. Oh, that's so, freaking awesome. That's, <laughs> it's you. actually, it, we, we call that an identity statement identity as well. Statement. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Anything you put the words I am in front of is an identity statement. And that is one of the exercises we do, because it, it pulls you into that identity that you design for yourself. I mean, people spend more time planning a birthday party than they do designing their lives. And <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed. You know, I've, I, mine is I, Rod Cleef, a magnificent, amazing, passionate gift from God. I'm an incredible father. I'm an inspiring leader. I'm a loving billionaire and I'm an amazing husband that puts smiles on the faces of children, inspires others to excellence and rocks the world. And I have said that thousands and thousands and thousands of times. And you yep. just, you end up owning it. And it's just a very, very powerful exercise um, that you guys, that you, if you ever come to one of my boot camps, you will do it and you will just figure out how powerful it really is to helping you bring that into existence. So and quick, quick tip, quick yeah, tip uh, real quick that I, that I do, I, I have mine posted on my mirror. Uh, and while I'm brushing my teeth every morning, I read it uh, in my head. Uh, and that's just one thing where, 
during the day, you know, you're brushing your teeth. You have to do that every day. You might as well say something like that and start the day right and uh, get your mindset in the right. And sometimes just get to remind yourself if you're having a bad day or whatever it is. So small little quick tip there that works for me. And some people might like that. Uh, but well, I definitely wanted to touch on. Yeah, it's, it's awesome, man. The, and I was going to say, I was Go going to say, too, just because I think it's important. That fear piece is so key, especially as you really are getting out of your comfort zone. And so for part of it, right, like even doing that, like you're still going to feel the fear or at least at least I did. Right. Just being honest, like because it's very new, it's very uncomfortable. And so accepting you're going to feel the fear and, and do it anyways. And just just jumping, moving forward, um, I think is really key to realize it's, it's you're going to feel that, but do it anyways. And part of how that can help is like doing what I did, finding a team of people who is above and farther ahead where I was and understanding, okay, how can I bring them value and be a part of this? So I'm not doing it all on my own. Yeah. Yeah. Love let's, it. let's talk about a little more detail on that actually. Cause I know people hear like, Oh, you can do deals in different States. It's a team sport, et cetera. Um, obviously you live in California, done a deal across the country in Nashville team being a big part of that. If you could give, give the listeners some more detail on what, what's been your strategy for networking, relationship building to help you get a deal like that. Yeah, good question. For me, it was coming into as I was getting into this space, both with working with Rod and the other warriors and uh, attending local meetups in my area was first just a lot of networking, a lot of talking, just learning the space, understanding it so that I could feel very comfortable talking to it and understanding what is a good deal, what isn't a good deal, what's important about it. Uh, But then I'd say the second key piece of that for me was really understanding to that point, right, of other people being maybe where I wanted to be of how can I provide them value? And so as I was looking at these conversations with all these different people, trying to figure out whether it was they were looking for a deal, they were looking for capital, recognizing, okay, here's where all these people that I'm meeting and establishing relationships with are. Now, how could I potentially help them? Yeah. Yeah. And and this is, I'm sure most of that was inside the warrior group, which, you know, and that, that actually uh, is a fantastic approach that you took. In fact, I'm going to suggest that just, just looking for where you can add value. Um, absolutely love it. Well, let me ask you this. Any, uh, what do you think is the most challenge? What has been the most challenging part of this multifamily game for you? Or, or you can answer that, or you can just tell us about a setback and, you know, when you, any, any bumps in the road with that, with that deal that you did uh, in Nashville that uh, you want to share, maybe lesson you learned. Either, yeah. either one of those. Yeah. yeah. I'll be happy to, to answer both. I'll answer the first one quick. Finding deals is very hard. This right. is a crazy, mar- uh, crazy market. I'm sure you get that all the time. Uh, yeah. We underwrite deals. My partner does this full time and is looking at deals all day, every day. And, and it's hard. So that's, right. that is definitely a key piece of kissing a lot of frogs to, to find the princess. Uh, I, another, I guess, personal story, right, of just uh, a setback was, your typical deal structure and when you get a deal under contract, is it set to close in, in 60 days? Well, we had found a lender, a bridge lender that, um, you know, we had our, our uh, loan broker said, I've never worked with these guys before, but they seem okay. Uh, we had been ta- working with them uh, week in and week out, you know, for 55 days, right before we were about to close, we had all the equity raised, millions of dollars sitting in the account. And they say, hey, we actually can't uh, loan on this, on this asset. And it was just like that moment was like a very like heart stopping, like, oh, my goodness. Um, and, and it was it was hard for a moment. Right. We were not nervous in that we knew that the financials had come back. The the appraisal had actually come back five million dollars over what we were buying. So we knew that wow. we were that we didn't have any issues there. We didn't have any issues with third party reports. And so we felt comfortable that we could get another lender. But all of a sudden we had to scramble. We had to we luckily had within our contract the 30 day extension for additional hard money down. Um, and we were able to right, go to our investors, explain the situation, quickly find uh, another lender and expedite that process in order to close. Uh, but that was a bit of a, a tough setback that, again, it's, it's pretty rare to happen. No lender is going to want to do that because it's going to give them a, a black mark in the industry. But we we're thinking this uh, particular private bridge lender was just going to have trouble uh, funding funding the loan as they were looking for outside sources for it. But it was mm-hmm. a tough moment right three days before closing to say, hey, we were out. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You, you, with, with bridge lending, it's, you've got to be very, very careful. In fact, that's kind of the bell of the ball right now. We're actually um, doing some bridge ourselves on a couple of assets that uh, we're looking at. Um, and it's not my first choice, but uh, it, it, you know, the, a lot of the conforming debt is um, very, very um, 
you know, the, the, the loan to value has really gone down yes. uh, in a lot of markets. Um, so let me ask you this, um, a kind of a follow-up to that last question. You know, I know you've got a, a, a young child, two-year-old and, um, you know, and a family. How have you managed that work-life balance? You know, cause you know how much emphasis I put on that. And if you've been to many of my, which you have, um, you know, how, how do you manage that? Talk about that a little bit for people that are listening that, you know, have a W-2 job, maybe have kids and they're wondering how they can do this. Talk about that. Yeah, it's a it's a good question and, and probably a familiar answer, but a, but a very honest one, right? What, it was having to take a step back and say, what is most important to me? And saying, okay, I've got these hours that I have to commit to this day job to continue to put food on the table. My family is more important than anything, so they need time. But I truly want to grow an incredible business and bring value to others through real estate. And so I can't deny myself doing that. And so does that mean that I'm having to get up a little earlier and maybe go to bed a little later right now? It is the case. Um, and just I'd say the number one thing about all of it is, is just being very intentional with my time. So it's doing time blocking. It's ensuring that, you know, I, I never miss a dinner with, with my family and I never miss that chance to spend the time with my, my wife and, uh, and two kids, because like, I refuse to sacrifice that your story really impacted me. And so I ensure that always happens. That doesn't mean that I'm not continuing to work after the kids go down and maybe some in the morning. And it's not going to be like that. I don't think forever it's right now, not. right. It's a grind and build process, but it's accepting that's where we're at right now. I've got a sign on my wall right now. It says, focus, grind now, play later. Love and that's it. it. Yeah. And you're one year in, you sound like you know what you're talking about. You sound like an expert, which is awesome. Just to give the listeners a little bit of context here before we go forward. What outside of the REIT, which obviously was your job, did you have any, remind me, did you have any single family, multifamily real estate experience before this first deal? Great question. I actually still out in Southern California and currently renting uh, a home. And this was my very first real estate transaction was uh, signing on an over $10 million loan here. So it was, uh, it was, it was taking Rod's advice and running with it. Boom. Boom. Well, let me ask you this. What do you, where do you think you got the most value out of the warrior group? Because uh, you know, I, I, that your story is very unusual. Oh, I shouldn't say very unusual, but it is. It, most people don't start as big as you did. So speak to that for a moment, if you would. Yeah, I think um, two key pieces of why it was so important for me. The first was mindset. It was helping me realize this is attainable, that what I focus on is what I can achieve. And so if I start focusing on going big, I can achieve that. And I know that it's possible. And so that was the first key piece. The second was absolutely the people, right? It was interacting with those who had done, you know, one to three to five deals who were still looking for potential partners that I recognized, Hey, if I'm able to find a great deal, or if I'm able to help raise capital that I can, I can be a part of a, you know, a great deal that I can bring to others. And I was able to find those others through the warriors. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, by the way, guys, if you are interested, uh, I brought up the Warrior Program just because I wanted to mention this. If you are interested in applying, text the word CRUSH to uh, 72345 um, and uh, you can check us out and we check you out. Uh, we don't take everybody, but uh, again, you just text CRUSH so we can help you crush it in this business like uh, like we have with Sam here and and uh, uh, just text CRUSH to 72345. Um, so, let me ask you this. As you were moving along in this business, did you have any epiphanies um, at any point in, 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 your, in your journey here? Any, any like, aha, okay, now I get it. Any, anything like that come to mind? I think you mentioned one where it related to going bigger, you know, instead of, um, you know, starting with a duplex or something, but anything else come to mind? If not, don't worry about it. I'm just curious. Yeah. I, go big. That was absolutely one of the, the key ones. And I think the other is I really started to, to focus on my really core focus has been on, on raising capital as my partner's mm-hmm. been the one really, really looking at finding the deals was it was a little bit of an intimidating thing to go do for a first time. But I, I came to recognize as I, you know, created a very polished presentation um, that I then began to share with others that, again, this is something that in no way feels like, oh, here's a a startup company, please put your money in it and maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't. Like if you're being smart with your your underwriting, looking at your deals, I came to recognize like, again, real estate is such a fantastic 
asset. Multifamily is such a fantastic asset that people were very interested and excited. And even though I didn't have that quote unquote track record, they were able to see the numbers of the building. They were able to see the potential of the opportunity. Um, and people were interested and excited to be a part of it, which I think I, I took for granted of, you know, just again, what a great space this, this could be and a little less scary than maybe I thought it would be of approaching others to share opportunities. Well, that was a limiting belief, believe yeah. it or not. Uh, and uh, we talk about that and and we all have them for all sorts of various things. And you thought it was going to be harder than it was. And and it's really just building relationships and being yeah. honest and authentic and, and yeah. truthful. And, you know, I know we also provide a, a deal package that you can use as an example, um, you know, for for. To, to help with in, in, in some cases. Now you're a great communicator. You probably didn't even need it, but, but. Oh no, I know. used it. <laughs> oh, did you use it? Okay. Yeah. yeah, we do. We, we do it. We use what's called a sample deal package where you can just present it to somebody and say, Hey, if I find a deal, you know, this is the kind of stuff we're looking for. If we find a deal like this, are you interested? And it just starts the conversation uh, and, and can, you know, just make it easier to get over that initial hump, but uh, good for you for pushing through the fear. Thank you. That's a, that's, a, that's a key thing I want to mention because people hear that, but they don't, they don't really believe it. You know, you tell somebody, hey, guy, you had no experience, no pri- prior deals. Uh, you didn't have the track record. You, you went out and you raised, you know, millions of dollars for this deal. I mean, for just again, just for the listeners, was is there any sort of secret sauce to that or you just follow the process and do what other people do? Yeah, good question. I think really key is what what Rod said of just being honest and authentic of mm-hmm. of just presenting myself to them, presenting the deal to them. Um and then also like I won't say necessarily that it was it was easy, but it was simple, right? That it was still talking to a lot of people. You're still trying to line up where that person may be in their life and if it makes sense to invest mm-hmm. in, you know, a significant a significant amount of capital in a deal like this. And so it was it was a lot of work. It took a lot of time, but at the same time to Rod's point, build a ton of relationships, already had a ton of relationships that helped make it very simple for those who were ready to take the plunge. Nice, nice, nice. So listen, you know that I have a lot of aspiring multifamily investors. Maybe they've done some single family, maybe they've done a duplex or a couple of them or a few, but they know they want to go bigger. Um, what what would you say to those to those people listening that that are at that place? Or maybe they haven't done anything yet like you. Yeah. Uh, initially, um, you know, but they know they want more for their families. They 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 see the writing on the wall. Um, they 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 recognize that um, you know they don't have the freedom they want, and they want to build that for themselves. Speak to those people. Yeah, don't stop taking action. First piece, right? When I was first getting started, it was as simple as just a little bit every day of learning more about the space. It was a little more of I'm going to talk to three people this week, even if I'm not sure anything's going to come of it. I will just always keep taking action. So that would be my first thing: is is just keep going, just keep your goal in front of you, keep moving towards it. And then the other piece, right? If you're wanting to go big, is look at the big things. If you're wanting to uh, be getting in units that are you know 100 plus units. Be looking and finding and talking to the brokers that are dealing in the hundred plus units. Make sure that you're you're fishing in the right pond, so to speak. And that as you work it, you'll you'll find it. That's good. That's good. So um, last, really last question or line of questioning. What's what's your driver, buddy? What's 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 driving you? Um, you know, what, what's 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 the motivation for you? Yeah, you know, it's. At a, at a very core level, I feel my purpose is to serve uh, my higher power by serving others. And that's something that is a core part of, of me and figuring out, okay, how do I actually do that? And I found real estate is just something I'm so excited about. The ability to bring wealth to people, not only financially, but from uh, a peace of mind perspective of what they can have as they, as they grow themselves in their lives. That's something that I really want to be able to not only give to, to others, but build for myself. And it's something that, that keeps me going every day is to, yeah. uh, to fulfill that why. Love it. Love it. And you're providing housing. You're, I mean, you're, you're, yes. you're, you're providing employment uh, in our business. There's lots of ways to serve. And, and the, well, but yeah, the fact that you answered it that way is, is, a, is a great way to answer it because power moves to those who serve. And, and, you know, and that's a, that's a recurring theme in my warrior program of people that want to help other people. And you see it, you know, in the Facebook posts, I, we, we have our coaching call today and I was going through all the Facebook posts, which I do every, for every call. If there's any, I want to elaborate on questions and help answer questions that were asked. And 
good Lord, we had a ton of closings this last couple of weeks uh, as well, but uh, everybody congratulating everybody else. And when you're around that kind of an environment where people are building each other up and, and you've got a group of people that want to make the world a better place, it's, it's, it's pretty incredible to watch, but well, listen, my friend, I really appreciate you coming on. It's good to see you and uh, excited to see what's next for you. And uh, I don't know if you're able to make the Sarasota warrior event coming up here in short order, but if not, maybe I'll see you in Denver at the, at the next live event. Yep. Hoping to be yeah. there. Uh, thank right. you, Rod. Really appreciate right. it. And Mark, thank you as well. All right. Yeah, take care. Yeah. All right. Rod, I know a lot of our listeners are wanting to take their multifamily investing business to the next level. Now, I know you've been hard at work helping our warrior students do just that using our ACT methodology, which is awareness, close, and transform. Can you explain to the listeners how they can get our help? You bet. Guys, we've been going nonstop for three years, building an amazing community of like-minded people. And our coaching students, which we call our warriors, have had extraordinary results. They've purchased thousands and thousands of units. And last year, we did over a 1,000 units with our students. And we're looking to grow this group and take it to the next level. We're looking for people who want to follow a proven framework that's really step-by-step and then leverage our systems and network to raise equity, to find and close deals, and to build partnerships nationwide. Now, our warrior community is finding success in any market cycle. So, if you're interested in finding out more about how you can become more of our incredible network and take advantage of the incredible opportunities that are coming very soon, apply to work with us at mentorwithrod.com or text CRUSH to 72345 and we'll set up a call so you can check us out and we can check you out. That's mentorwithrod.com or text CRUSH to 72345.